Caitlin Clark is not just dominating the unba, she's rewriting history. And for those who doubted her, like Cheryl Swoops, the regret is real. Caitlin Clark is a force to be reckoned with, and Angel Reese, she's just a baby in comparison. From record-shattering performances to silencing her critics, Caitlyn's dominance is undeniable. Caitlyn Clark dominated her rookie year because she brung points and she brung assists and she brought wins. See, why That's do you keep dominance. using rookie year? Because she's never been here before. She has no experience. I know, but what I'm saying, so do you think this is the best she can be? No, I'm just no, saying no, this no. year, she so, dominated amongst the people that didn't think that she could. She gave you points and she gave you an assist. So you like, tell me the other guards, Arike, Kelsey, all these other guards that you can name up and line up beside I, I her. I can compare and to, say, I, it's like me comparing um, Allen Iverson with Mark Jackson. If all the guards are like Mark Jackson and then Allen Iverson come in, I can't compare. They're two but different breeds. But Mark Jackson breeds. is not giving you 20 and 10. Because he can't physically do it. Right. But this is a can. different But this so you is a can't different say breed. Mark Jackson what versus Allen Iverson. This is Iverson. a different breed of a, this is a new breed that's coming in, right? This is just the beginning. So if I if I say she's dominant, you're I know what you're capable of. But you're comparing so I'm not even it. Gonna, yeah. I'm not even yeah, going to yeah, pretend. Yeah. That the this, dominant, the I know part, you are a 30 in 10, yeah, 12 yeah. person. So I'm not even going to say you're dominant. No, I'm, I know what you're capable of. Like, if, if when Kobe Elijah, Shaq, you we know. all knew, we all knew when Shaq left, what did we say? Oh, this motherfucker's about to dominate. No. Yes, we did. Kobe <laughs> Bryant was when, the most when dominant. When Katie left, when he was Katie, the most dominant two guard during the three peat. The dominant two guard during the, the three, three peat. And then what? What then? What didn't we see? What dominance really looked like when Shaq left? Yes, this is dominant. That other shit was. Oh, you were really good. This is dominated. 81, 60, and three. This was a dominant. They had two when Katie players. left. We who, who wrote it? Someone wrote. Oh shit. Russell might average a triple double. Didn't someone? There was a player who said that. I don't know what player. There was a player when KD left. Someone said, "Oh, Russell might fuck around and average a triple double this year." No one believed it. Mm, but remember. someone, someone seen like we know what his potential is. Caitlin's potential is thirty, guaranteed. No doubt. When that happens, that is her dominant year. No. 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 Reese? No. No, bro. Austin, Austin Rivers. Rivers. No. Austin you can't, Rivers you can't equate dominance just to points. Well, no, I no. But because the 30 and 12, that's going to be 30, 12, and she's going to have eight eight rebounds. Yeah. That's going to be, that's what her potential is. Yeah. No, I get that. But that's what she's Reese. doing right Angel now Reese. is still dominant. She's Angel, still doing Angel Reese. 19 assists is not dominating? Yes. But, she, but she's not averaging 19 assists. She's averaging 10, no, 20 points, and 8.4. What I'm saying is Angel Reese. She ain't averaging Angel, 20 points and 8.4 assists. 19.5 points. Angel, Angel Reese. Nine assists. Remember, I Angel Reese dominating this year? Right. Angel Reese dominating this year? No. No, this is not a dominant. No, she's not. This is a baby. But, but this is, she's a baby right yeah. now. But this, but this, no. for all you can see, we're not talking about where no. she's going to go in the because future. Because it doesn't even make sense. What, 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 what record? What record? If she has no expectations. What record does she and have? And then she comes in what, and she leads the league. Consecutive double doubles record and then the rebounding record. Say it again. Consecutive double doubles and the rebounding rebound. record. Next year, she's going to break that. But but that's already a dominant record right now. No, no, no. She but, dominated but is, the rebounding. But the problem is she dominated it, but we know that's the bottom line of it. Yes, but we can't she's say gonna, it's not a dominant. She's going to she push dominated. it again. Yeah, both all, of them we, dominate. All we can do is sit here right now, September 17th, and say what it is right now. We can't say she dominated. Well, think, okay, if she they, dominated. Well, now we can go back. Both both if we take away, they both if we, have really good rookie If we take away the, both land in no, the categories okay. they're good at. No, no, no. No, no. They dominated the year. They ended at the top. If we take away their expectations, if we take away their expectations and say, we didn't expect anything from them because we never seen them play. Okay, they dominated. All right, they dominated. They dominated in yeah, as rookies. But, but that watch. was the, we, that was the expectation she set up. Listen, no, her expectation was thirty. No, no, no. Her expectation my came expectation in saying she's saying worth. you guys are not gonna come in here and dominate like you think. That's her but saying. Listen, no, no, whatever your expectation is, it's gonna be more I said, difficult. I said dominate immediately. Immediately, yeah. So regardless, you know what? the and expectation, they didn't and they didn't, they didn't, but the expectation was said. set. It was set that, hey, look, we're not expecting y'all to come in here and dominate. See, we're not expecting you, you put, to come in here and dominate. But the thing is, I think a lot of people treated that as you trying to bash Angel and Caitlyn instead of just pointing out that the W is going to be has tough. great players. Yes, it's like, tough. You know what I mean? I think that's the, the, 
We, it should have been the bottom line. That's just crazy. Uh, it should have been the bottom It should have been the bottom line of what what their what the expectation was. Okay, but I have a question. I have a question for Richard. So given like you're like, yeah, they both dominate. What what how do you look at it if if you're giving up or you're giving out eight assists per game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's had several double-digit assists. But you got turnovers, right? Yep. You're leading in turnovers. Yep. I get it, she's a rookie, it happens, she'll get better. But do you factor in what she's given up on the defensive end? Yes. You do? Yes. And you still say she dominated? No, that's, that's, the, that's the thing that fights against her. The thing that overweighs that is the winning. Okay. So the dominating factor of me being a point guard, I have to now point, I have to score and I have to distribute. And during those distri distributions, I'm turning it over. Great. But guess what we're doing? We're winning. We're winning. Okay, the, the, Okay. so since we know LeBron's career, rookie 25 and five, was that considered dominating? Would, you wouldn't say that that was a, a dominant rookie season for LeBron. See, again, now, you said it now, rookie <laughs> season. You're you're adding rookie season. Yes. Because they have but, always, rookie season, yes. Yeah, yes. But if we were that's having this conversation. conversation in 2004, that's all we would base. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm, all we would talk about. Now we have a full but 20, the state, 20 season. But see, you're, you're, you're capitalizing on rookie season. I didn't say it was no, the most dominant. They, we, no, but, but we did say it was the most dominant. No, what I'm saying is the statement was dominating. The They were the lead, not rookie. I didn't say she's not going to dominate as a rookie. Right. Well, y'all leaving out the context that she is a rookie, so you only can say as a rookie. No. She's a rookie, so if she comes in and dominates, now you have to say, as a rookie, she dominated. But you, but you said, yeah, she dominated all rookies. Yeah, but I never, but rookies. I never, but I never said yes. she's not gonna come in and dominate immediately over all the rookies. Cheryl Swoops on Ball Legend once held a strong opinion. Caitlin Clark wasn't going to dominate the on bar right away. But let's be real. Caitlin Clark didn't just dominate, she exceeded all expectations. Swoops, in a podcast appearance on Jill's Arena, even questioned what domination meant when it came to Caitlin's performance. She asked, what would the numbers have to be for Caitlin to dominate well? Cheryl, let's talk numbers because Caitlin's season has been nothing short of historic. Clark isn't just a player, she's a phenomenon. 19.5 points per game, 8.4 assists, 5.7 rebounds. No rookie in Onba history has ever posted these numbers. Cheryl might have questioned Clark's ability to dominate, but the stats are undeniable. With 329 assists this season, Clark not only set the rookie record, but smashed the single season on by assist record. If that's not domination, Cheryl, what is? Cheryl Swoops might now regret her earlier comments, especially when faced with the reality of what Caitlin Clark has accomplished. Swoops even admitted she never said Clark wouldn't be good, but let's not sugarcoat it. She didn't think Caitlyn or Angel Reese would dominate right away. And while we're on the subject, let's see how Angel Reese is faring compared to Caitlyn. In the next section, we'll break down why Angel Reese, despite all the hype, isn't even close to matching Caitlyn Clark's level of dominance. Angel Reese, a player often mentioned in the same breath as Caitlyn Clark, has struggled to live up to the expectations placed on her. She was supposed to be Caitlyn's rival, the one who could match her every move. But let's be honest, Reese is nowhere near Caitlyn's level. While Clark is setting league records, Reese is barely making an impact on the same scale. In fact, comparing their stats is almost laughable. Reese's name might still be floating around from her collegiate days, but in the onba, Caitlyn Clark is the one making history. Clark leads the league with a staggering 329 assists, and her ability to drain three-pointers from seemingly impossible distances sets her apart. Meanwhile, Reese's numbers barely scratch the surface of Clark's achievements. And it's not just about the numbers, it's about the impact. Clark has led the Fever to their first playoff appearance since 2016, while Reese, she's still trying to find her footing. Caitlin Clark's domination isn't because of the color of her skin, as some may insinuate. It's because she's that good. Angel Reese, in comparison, is just a baby in the league. And Caitlin Clark? She's in her own league? Now, let's dive back into Cheryl Swoops and her sudden change of heart. Even she couldn't ignore Caitlin's greatness. Cheryl Swoops, once firm in her belief that Caitlin Clark wouldn't dominate the Omba right away, has had a change of heart. On the Gills Arena podcast, she tried to clarify her earlier remarks, saying she never doubted Caitlin's talent but believed it would take time for her to adjust to the pro level. However, let's be real, Caitlin didn't need time. She hit the ground running. 
Swoops is now admitting that Clark has impressed her. But let's not forget how she initially dismissed the idea of immediate domination. Swoops even famously said Caitlin played against younger college athletes as if that diminished her accomplishments. But here's the reality, Caitlin Clark is putting up numbers that no one else in the Onba, rookie or veteran, has matched. And Cheryl Swoops, for all her greatness, missed the mark on this one. The funny thing is, Swoops admitted during a Twitter Spaces chat that she was saying the wrong things about Clark. She called out the Iowa Stars college career but now has to acknowledge that Clark has proven her wrong on every level. And while Swoops backpedals, Clark keeps breaking records. Let's go deeper into those records. Caitlin Clark's rookie season is already historic, and we're only scratching the surface. Caitlin Clark's rookie season is nothing short of legendary. Not only has she shattered the record for most assists in a single season with 329, but she's also the fastest player in Anba history to reach 103 pointers. These are numbers that seasoned veterans would be proud of, let alone a rookie. Caitlin Clark is a unique player. She's rewriting the Anba record books, not just for rookies, but for the entire league. In her debut season, she's already got the record for most points scored by a rookie with 761 surpassing Simone Augusta's previous mark, and her assists. No one has ever done what she's doing, 19 assists in a single game. This isn't just dominance, it's a complete takeover of the league. And it's not just the stats, it's the way Caitlin plays. Whether it's her incredible range, her court vision, or her leadership, Clark has changed the game. She's leading the Indiana Fever to their first playoff appearance since 2016, and this is only the beginning. Still think she's not dominating Cheryl, now, with the playoffs on the horizon, let's see what Caitlin and the Fever have in store for the competition. The Indiana Fever are back in the playoffs, and it's largely thanks to Caitlin Clark after several seasons in the Onba Wilderness, the Fever have found their leader. With Clark at the helm, the team has secured 20 wins this season, a significant improvement from their five-win season just a year ago. But don't think for a second that they're satisfied with just making the playoffs. Clark has made it clear this team isn't just happy to be in the playoffs. They're here to win. The Fever have the weapons with Clark leading the charge, and they're more than capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the WNBA's elite. Whether it's the Las Vegas Aces or the Connecticut Sun, Indiana is ready for a fight. And with Clark averaging 19.5 points, 8.4 assists, and 5.7 rebounds, every team in the league better take notice. The Fever are coming into these playoffs with momentum, and Clark is their driving force. With her leadership and record-breaking season, the Fever aren't just a playoff team, they're a legitimate threat. The question is, can anyone stop Caitlin Clark? And with all of this success, Caitlin Clark isn't just aiming for Rookie of the Year, she's entering the VIP conversation. Caitlin Clark's rookie season has been so dominant that she's even entering the VIP conversation. That's right, a rookie in the MVEP race, with her record-breaking season and impact on the Indiana Fever's success. Clark has forced her way into the conversation usually reserved for veterans like Ajay Wilson and Brianna Stewart. Now, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Ajay Wilson is still the favorite with her 27.5 points per game and incredible defensive work. But Clark finishing in the top five for MVEP, that's not just possible, it's likely. In her rookie year, Caitlin Clark is challenging the league's very best. And that, my friends, is the mark of a true legend in the making. Caitlin Clark has transformed the Indiana fever, and she's putting up numbers that rival the league's most established stars. Whether she wins the MVEP this season or not, one thing is clear, Caitlin Clark is the future of the Mwamba, and she's here to stay. Caitlin Clark's rookie season isn't just historic, it's redefining what's possible in the Onba. From breaking records to leading her team to the playoffs, Clark has proven her doubters wrong and set a new standard for future players. Cheryl Swoops might have doubted her, but now even she has to admit that Caitlin Clark is a once-in-a-generation talent. And for Angel Reese, she's still just a baby compared to the dominance of Caitlin Clark. The future of the Onba is here, and her name is Caitlin Clark.